All right, hopefully everyone can hear me. A uh, little technical difficulties. Camera did not want to cooperate today, so we are going to get started with pans and pandas. Welcome back to another Healthier You Lunchtime Live with me, Dr. Eric Potter, Functional MD from Sanctuary Functional Medicine. Today, we take on pans and pandas, a collection of disease processes which can do a Jekyll and high personality switcheroo on your child. Besides giving a name to the heartache that parents live through, we provide hope that can only come after proper diagnosis and root cause therapy using the best natural and conventional approaches. Pans and pandas may sound like a noisy bunch of black and white bears eating bamboo while banging pots and pans in your kitchen. To parents of these afflicted children, it can feel as though we are living in a madhouse. Their preteen, even preschool age child, was growing up like all the neighborhood kids. But soon, after a seemingly benign strep throat or other infection of childhood, a switcheroo flipped. Little Johnny acquired odd behaviors with tics and twitches. Little Susie became unexplainedly anxious or depressed. Confident Jack began worrying about every germ within a mile of him. Carefree Beth could no longer sleep without nightmares and middle-of-the-night insomnia. While parents know that kids go through stages, these parents want to know, uh, wait to no avail and months later look back in hopes of identifying the wrong turn in the child's health. Various doctor visits assure them to wait it out or consider some medicine or try some child therapist. After months, and sometimes years, the parents reach the point of despair. As the child grows and becomes more aware that they are different, they may begin to despair of ever finding relief themselves. Functional medicine offers hope. As we know that root causes lie underneath the surfaces of these symptoms, and we know that resolving the identified root causes lead to relief and recovery and a healthier life. Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorder Associated with Strep, PANDAS, and Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Syndrome, PANS, have big names and even, even bigger impacts, but share a common mechanism of damaging the brains of these children. As the name suggests, they share the mechanisms of autoimmunity the dysfunctional process by which our normally protective immune system turns on our bodies and starts attacking us. In these disorders, the immune system turns on our children's brains and creates inflammation in brain areas necessary for thinking and feeling. This inflammation results in dysfunction of these areas, either turning them up or down, and thus the actual symptoms arise from what areas turned up or turned down. With dysfunctional nerve cells in these areas come abnormal levels of neurotransmitters. With different neurotransmitters responsible for different brain functions, the actual symptoms depend on which area and which neurotransmitter fluctuates out of balance. Excessive serotonin could cause manic symptoms while low levels could lead to anxiety or depression. Abnormal levels of dopamine can lead to either loss of the ability to enjoy activities, paranoid symptoms, or even hallucinations. Changes in levels of catecholamines like norepinephrine and epinephrine, also known as noradrenaline and adrenaline, may affect attention and focus and energy levels. Children as young as those in preschool may go from normal to nightmare over a week two weeks or even a single night. They begin washing their hands to avoid germs uh, until the hands bleed. They begin become so attached to a parent they won't go to school or they obsess over a parent's risk of dying before they see, me, see them again. They begin having panic attacks at random times for no reason. They become depressed to the point of suicidal thoughts at times. They develop tics and twitches weird repetitive movements they have little control over. All of this arises from this autoimmune inflammation damaging their brain cells. 
this autoimmune process was triggered by either an infection or maybe a toxin. Either of these triggers, or sometimes a synergistic combination of both, sets off a cascade where the nervous system mistakes the child's uh, the immune system mistakes the brain's child's brain cells for the attacker, while the immune system fights a virus, bacteria, parasite, or toxin. It also harms the brain cells. Even after the trigger seems to fade out of the picture, the neuropsychiatric syndromes continue for months and years, often flaring when another infection comes along. Parents and the child's doctors are baffled and sooner or later despairing of ever seeing improvement or resolution. Functional medicine has answers that conventional medicine ignores. First, we recognize that this syndrome is real and your child's symptoms are not the result of bad parenting or bad genetics or bad luck. Second, we know that finding the original trigger or ongoing triggers offers a real opportunity to resolve both the inflammation and the symptoms and return your child back to normal. Third, we know what therapies work to remove the triggers and stimulate healing rather than continue ongoing damage to the brain and your child's future. We begin by looking for clues in the child's story, which suggests pans or pandas. Sudden onset after an obvious infection provides the biggest clue. But not all children start out so obviously. Many times, the symptoms develop over a few weeks or are only recognized after an emotional crisis that breaks through the surface of recognition. Sometimes, the actual infectious trigger caused no symptoms in the child, but siblings were sick with strep or some other fever at the same time the child's symptoms began. When we, look at confirm we then look at confirmatory tests to identify the triggers that started and could be continuing the inflammation. Often, viruses continue long-term in our bodies with subtle symptoms, but no fever or other symptoms, to give away their presence. Often, the immune system reacts to other infections other than the original and cause neuropsychiatric changes with every virus or fever that comes along. Strep can recur and trigger a flare of the original emotional changes. At times, exposures to toxins like mold exacerbate the symptoms and indicate that a toxin is involved primarily or secondarily. When the history and the test point together to pans or pandas, we target both the triggers and the actual inflammatory process. We employ natural and or pharmaceutical antivirals or antibacterials to lower loads of these infectious triggers. We augment the immune system to prevent future occurrences of these infections. We remove toxins through various means, depending on which type of toxin is involved. We activate the child's anti-inflammatory and healing mechanisms to turn off the brain inflammation and return the child to optimal brain health. With this approach, we see these children and their parents not only regain hope, but return to a healthier, more abundant life that they had both hoped for. This process can take six to 18 months and requires support therapies to get through the early rough seasons. But with some time and cooperation between us and them, we seek success. Pans or pandas is not a life sentence when the root cause is identified and properly addressed. With that, let's take time to answer questions and discuss this important issue. So I'm turn, go ahead and stop the screen. So with that, hopefully everybody got a good inter introduction to pans and pandas. I'm just going to flip over so I can see things on our screen if anybody's left any questions. We have a question here already be ready for any other questions that are coming up. So any of you that are watching now, feel free to put your questions uh, on our Facebook page. 
the first question, uh, is it possible to have PANS uh, without OCD behavior? Uh, so first of all, just so everybody recognizes the terms, uh, OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. When we're thinking about PANS and PANDAS, that is one of the classic, meaning original, recognized, and one of the more common uh, presentations uh, in which children have these obsessions and compulsions. They're obsessed with certain things, whether it's washing their hands, whether it's ordering things a certain way, or they get in routines where they, their bedtime routine has to do brush your teeth for exactly one minute, 30 seconds, and then you have to put your cup exactly on the left side, exact distance from the water faucet, and then you have to do a certain number of steps to your bed, and you have to say certain things right before you turn off the light. Uh, and if any of those things don't go in order, uh, then they have to start over. Uh, and compulsions, where they feel they have to do something, uh, it's very unsettling uh, until they actually do that. Uh, whether it's a wa hand washing, whether it's different checking the um, door to see if it's locked, uh, or checking to see if mom's home uh, or dad's home from work before they go to bed. So it's not just, oh, I want to know. It's the, oh, I can't really function without going ahead and doing that action. So children get stuck, uh, and this can become uh, very disabling for them, uh, for the routines, for the uh, effects it has on their health. So this OCD behavior can um, be very harmful to the child and very uh, disrupt disruptive to the family uh, and worrisome for the parents. With that, uh, is it possible, the question was, can you have PANS or PANDAS without OCD? Yes. Uh, you may just have a child that starts having panic symptoms. Uh, intermittently, may not even be every day, it could be once a week, twice a week, once a month, where they just go all out panic uh, and are scared. Uh, they may have palpitations, they may have the, classically the sense, oh, I'm gonna die, something so bad is gonna happen that I'm going to die from this. Uh, some panic attacks, they may just have anxiety or depression. Um, parents will often report just a sudden mood change where this child, normally a happy-go-lucky uh, little jack, uh, suddenly becomes just constantly worried, constantly sad. Everything's, uh, there's nothing good uh, that they can see in their life. Uh, so there's a variety of uh, presentations. You can have the tics. Uh, we talked about twitches, tics. That's where they uh, may just constantly, you know, blink their eye all the time, and that can be related to the compulsions because they feel like if they don't blink their eye, they don't feel good, or they're doing a arm twitch. Uh, it, it can just about be anything. It can be even complex that they do something where it's they are always constantly doing the same motion over again, um, simple or complex. Uh, so there can be a lot of presentations. Uh, so again, when we have children uh, that we're sitting uh, across the table from in the office, there's been some emotional neuropsychiatric, neurologic, meaning uh, like more the tics, they can have uh, weird sensations, or psychiatric, more the emotional, behavioral related. Uh, we will start thinking about pans and pandas and look for potential things that could be triggering that. Um, so that hopefully answers that question. Yes, you can have pans and pandas without OCD. Uh, so another question, um, what are some of the things that trigger it, uh, trigger pans and pandas? So with that, we can look at uh, viruses. We can look at probably some bacteria, uh, some toxins, uh, mold toxins, which we deal with a lot here at our office, uh, can definitely be one of those things. Uh, it can be Lyme disease. Uh, Lyme disease can affect the brain. Uh, it's a little more chronic uh, and sometimes not quite as acute onset, meaning it's kind of built up over time. Uh, Bartonella uh, can have a lot of neuro neurologic and psychiatric symptoms, another infection. It comes either through cat scratch or through um, tick bites. Tick bites a cat, bites you, passes on the Bartonella that's running around the bloodstream uh, in that kitten or cat. So with those things, so the uh, viruses can be Epstein-Barr, CMV, could be just regular cold viruses. Uh, again, some of those bacteria that we just mentioned, toxins, uh, heavy metals can disrupt the brain. Uh, mercury does a little bit more with your immune system, uh, but sometimes it's, say, mercury, causing you to overreact to a otherwise innocuous infection that your um, virus that your body should fight off. Uh, and suddenly that one plus one equals 15 and their symptoms, instead of those symptoms coming and going, uh, those neuropsychiatric symptoms continue. Uh, so we look for all those things. Uh, and why is it that that body, that particular child's body, reacted differently 
than another child that, you know, even a sibling, a uh, brother or sister in the same household got strep, didn't have any of that. Can be, again, toxins plus infection, trouble. Uh, can be genetics. Uh, genetics probably do play a significant role in that, in which the body has a hyper, for some reason, there's a hyper immune response. Uh, even when we look at things like why do some people get sick from COVID vaccine and some people don't? Some, ever, we all react differently to toxins and infections. Uh, so with that, uh, we are looking for those things, looking for signs of those viruses or bacteria or those toxins, uh, and then doing appropriate testing. Um, because again, as I mentioned uh, in the initial presentation is, we want to find the root cause. This is not just about, oh, well, here's a psychiatric medicine. Here, take an SSRI, take some Zoloft, some uh, Paxil, some Prozac, and, you know, kid will get over the depression. He'll grow out of it. Eh, not in this case. Um, and it will be in children who, well, school was going great. That great friend, you know, wasn't some trigger. You think, oh, you know, yes, you look in, you check. Parents are going to have thought about this. And somebody, before they get to us, somebody said, oh, was there a bully? Uh, was there a loss in the family? Say a grandparent died, a, a favorite pet died. Uh, all those things have kind of been pushed to the wayside and checked off the uh, list. And, People are, uh, parents and uh, other doctors are scratching their heads. Um, so with that, we're looking for those things and trying to treat them. Now, why is it uh, a good question when we're dealing uh, with, at Sanctuary, we deal with a lot of things that conventional medicine doesn't necessarily recognize. Why is it that conventional medicine often ignores the possibility that pans or pandas could be the cause behind a child's symptoms? Well, we know that strep caused rheumatic fever, and some children years ago when they first started uh, determining what caused rheumatic fever, scarlet fever, and those things, there was a few children that got something called Sydenham's chorea, where they would have these movements, just rhythmic kind of movements, uh, even sometimes dancing, it might be in one limb, might be in multiple, uh, but it was like their nervous system was inflamed, and they'd have these repetitive movements. So we know that happened with strep, and then, as we're watching and these kids suddenly, you know, parents, one out, so many parents over the years have reported kids who literally had a strep infection and wake up the next day uh, with these weird symptoms and personality changes, mood changes, the tics, the OCD behavior. Um, and that was the only thing. And they realized that when they were treated with antibiotics, oh, we tested strep, you've got strep, yeah. The kids got better. The problem is when they stopped those antibiotics, those symptoms came back. Uh, so there are many in conventional medicine who started recognizing this was a possibility. Uh, but part of the difficulty is, uh, as we mentioned and kind of alluded to earlier, if you've got one child with pans or pans, pandas, and you've got another child with pans or pandas from another family with a different infection or a different trigger, they may look very different. They may both be depressed, but one has ticks and twitches and another uh, has OCD behavior or insomnia. Uh, and then you have another who's just having a lot of headaches uh, and is having panic attacks. Uh, so they're, they're not all the same. If you've got pneumonia, uh, it's easy. You're coughing, you've got a fever, you've got an x-ray abnormality there. Uh, that's kind of a, everything fits in a pretty nice box uh, in the case of pneumonia or meningitis, brain infections or skin infections. Uh, and they know which bacteria cause it. In this case, you've got a dip, each person can be a little different symptoms, and it's not one particular, say, uh, pneumococcal bacteria that causes it. It can be in this child Epstein Barr, it can be in this child mold toxin, this child Lyme disease, and another child mold plus Lyme disease. Uh, so it looks different, it has a multitude of causes, so it's more of a syndrome, meaning it's not one cause causing one thing, one uh, disease. It is a set of different possible causes working through one mechanism of an autoimmune response uh, to brain tissue cross-reacting with some toxin or infection uh, triggering symptoms and again depending on where it is in the brain will have different symptoms uh, for example if it's more in the frontal lobe uh, you would have more uh, cognitive issues a little more trouble thinking or um, making decisions Mainly, this is going to be more in the limbic system, which is right in the middle of the brain, kind of if you look straight down uh, or straight back in there, uh, you will see this limbic system. Uh, it connects the frontal lobes, which are thinking, uh, hippocampus, which are memory, amygdala, which is our fear emotions, and a lot of the pathways for thinking, feeling, uh, 
remembering all paths through this limbic system that controls our fight or flight and our emotional state. Uh, so with that, if that area is disrupted, kids will have trouble focusing, they'll have trouble thinking, they have trouble remembering. Uh, it will then activate fear responses, which is where some of the uh, panic comes in, panic attacks, OCD, where they're having fear that if they don't wash that hand that 20th time, they're not going to get that germ off uh, and something bad's going to happen and there's nothing the front of the brain can say to the emotional part of the brain. They're all, you know, 100% gas pedal uh, on the emotions and the fear, but no breaks in terms of being, oh, logically, I know that there can't, you know, after 20 times of washing that, there can't be any germs left, uh, but they will do it until it hurts. And then sometimes even when it's hurting, bleeding hands from dry skin, uh, they'll keep doing it. Uh, so depending on what part of the brain it is, you will see different symptoms. Uh, and so it looks very different. So then conventional medicine, just like, well, it can't, there, there's no way this can all work together. Uh, there no such thing as pans or pandas. Uh, but uh, there are some good sites out there. There's a pandas network for parents, helping them get some good information. Uh, I actually posted that on Facebook recently. Uh, they were having a fundraiser uh, for that if you want to go and uh, donate to the organization to help kids uh, and parents get more awareness and more support for that. Um, that's one place. Um, there's also, a, a, with that, I think they all, it might be the same organization that has a movie. Uh, I actually got to watch that. It um, had a showing at the Belmont Theater downtown Nashville, I think a year or two ago. Uh, but basically, going through the story of several families and ch the, the children who had experienced uh, Pans and Pandas uh, and what they'd done about it. So it helps you understand that there are real things real disease process out there. So we've got a little bit more time. want to make sure we um, leave time if any other people have questions. Looking on here, I haven't seen any other questions. So if you have one, you can get to the front of the line there. So I'm going to continue on a little bit more, and we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do. So with this, inflammation in certain parts of the brain uh, kind of causes some leaky brain and for a leaky gut, um, but it makes other things get in easier. So we want to do things that, one, get rid of that trigger. Uh, it's a big part of uh, functional medicine. It's treating root causes. What's triggering what started the snowball going down the hill, or what's keeping to push the snowball down the hill, and remove that so then we can reset things the way uh, God designed them to be uh, in a health, healthy uh, we call it homeostatic, meaning it is functioning uh, according to normal processes. Uh, with that, we're going to work on getting rid of these viruses or microbes, uh, again, helping patients' uh, immune system to actually function better. And you think, well, it's autoimmune. Do you want to turn up the immune system? No, we don't want to turn up the immune system against the brain that's causing the symptoms, but we do want to make the uh, immune system work smarter. And there's things we can do uh, if someone's natural killer cells uh, are low. There's some supplements that can help with that, whether it's andrographis or astragalus. Uh, those can be beneficial. Definitely want to make sure somebody's uh, vitamin D, vitamin C status is adequate. Uh, and also looking at uh, zinc uh, is another one, uh, that mineral that we want to make sure is adequate to keep uh, immune um, membranes mucosal membranes in good health. So we go into that in a whole lot more detail. I have an immune prepper course uh, in which I go into vast detail on different supplements, uh, how our body immune system functions. Uh, that is something that we have on our SFM and power site. But uh, for right now, we're going to just do the short list and uh, not get into deep, deep waters with that. But D, C, zinc, uh, making sure vitamin A is good looking at those herbals that can boost the immune system uh, where needed, uh, and then also modulate it so it's not, it does the right thing, not too much of one thing and not too little of the other, but just right in the middle. We also want to use anti-inflammatories so the inflammation processes don't cause more harm. Uh, and then we also are going to, as we will do in all functional medicine situations, making sure there's not other inflammatory sources. If you're eating uh, artificial dyes, artificial preservatives, if you're eating a lot of high sugar, those things are going to worsen inflammation uh, and 
worsen some of those symptoms. Uh, sometimes children with pans and pandas will be a little worse during the allergy season, which are kind of smack dab in the middle of right now, uh, and finding that if you control the histamine, those symptoms are a little bit better or a lot better sometimes. Uh, so with that, we are looking across the board on all the different uh, places where we can improve their health trying to get their brains to function the way they should. Uh, again, it's a, it's a slow process. It's something that has taken, sometimes has been occurring for months or even years, uh, but even then, yeah, the sooner the better. We get on top of it, so it causes a little permanent damage. Um, as children get it, they often outgrow it a little bit after puberty, so in the late teens, early 20s, but if it's not properly treated, uh, it can have some ongoing symptoms, so we want to get on top of that as early as possible. Um, so I think uh, a fire truck in the distance, I don't know if you can hear that or not, is signaling kind of uh, as it goes by uh, towards the end uh, of this session. Uh, I will be on here keeping eye on things. If you have questions and come back later and happen to be watching this at a later time, uh, I'll try to keep an eye and uh, leave comments. Uh, but uh, if you know someone uh, whose child may have pans or pandas and they've not gotten a diagnosis, please consider sharing this with them or again the uh, pandas parent network information. Um, if uh, you're interested, we are taking new patients in terms of treating children with pans and pandas. Uh, Sam at 615-815-5941 uh, is on the phone uh, that she can answer further questions about uh, our programs uh, and also uh, what we can do to help all other issues pretty much do all kind of things here at Sanctuary. Uh, treat functionally just about anything except cancer. Uh, so whether you're an adult and wondering, oh, did you grow up with pants and pandas and still have some symptoms uh, in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, there are some still, still some things we can do to potentially help you uh, recover from that. Um, or again, also, if we're just, you're wanting to optimize your health, we can do a deep dive and determine if there's any hidden issues that haven't reared their head yet. And I'd be glad to help you with those as well. So I'm going to bring things to a close. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, thank you for waiting for our delay with all the technical difficulties. Um, seems like the more we're pushed to digital uh, and technology, the more trouble we have. Uh, look forward to the old days of simplicity again, uh, hopefully coming soon. So thank you for joining us, and I will see you again next month. Uh, give you a date. second Thursday of next month. The topic is pending, but is going to be May the 13th. Uh, so look forward to seeing you then. Have a good day, and that is all for today.